In this video, we discuss how to create vectors using the colon operator. So first off, let's talk about why we even need another way of creating vectors. So let's say I wanted to create a vector that was all of the numbers in between one and a thousand. Right now, we only know how to use the direct entry method and concatenation. So if I wanted to create a vector that was all the numbers between one and a thousand, I would have to directly enter all 1,000 numbers. And I don't know about you, but I'm not trying to do that. So therefore, that's why we need an easier way to do that. And that way is with the colon operator. So the basic syntax for the colon operator is as follows. We have the number we want to start at, then a colon, then the step size, then another colon, and then the number we want to stop at. And we can save this inside of a vector. Okay, so for instance, let's say I had something like vec is equal to one colon two colon five. Okay, so what this is saying is I want to start at the number one and each successive number needs to be two more than the one before it. And we want to keep on going until we get to the number five. So therefore, this would start at one, then it adds two to one, so the next number we get is three, then it adds two to three, then the next number we get is five. Okay? And so it must be said that this stopping number here, it's not guaranteed to be inside of your vector. So what I mean by that is, let's say I had vec2 is equal to 1, 2, 1 colon 2 colon 6. Okay, so the same type of thing happens here. So we start at 1, we add 2, we get 3, we add 2, we get 5, and if I were to add 2 to 5, I would get 7, and 7 is past my stopping number. So therefore, MATLAB just stops there, and that will be the vector that's produced. So those two lines of code produce the same exact vector because that stopping number is not inclusive. So also, we don't have to have positive step sizes. We can have um, we can have something like this. Vec is equal to, let's say, 3 colon negative 1 colon 0. Okay. So this is saying I want to start at 3, go in steps of negative 1 back down to 0. So in this case, it would start at 3, it would subtract 1 and get 2, subtract 1 and get 1, subtract 1, and it would get 0. So that's what vector that this, this is the vector that would be created through this line of code. And lastly, what if we try to have MATLAB do the impossible? What happens then? So let's say, oh, let's say that last one is like three. Let's say I asked MATLAB to do something like this. Go from one steps of two down to negative five, okay? So there's no way that I can start with one, go in positive steps of two and end at a number that's less than one. So therefore, when you try to do something like this, when you try to use the colon operator and do the impossible, it's not going to error. What it's going to do is it's going to produce back an empty vector. Okay? So when you try to tell MATLAB to do something that it can't do, it gives you back an empty vector, and the length of that is zero. Okay? And one last thing, actually. So this is the basic... This is the basic syntax for the colon operator. Another syntax for the colon operator that I can use is 
simply eliminating the step. So computer scientists are notoriously lazy. And so there's a shorthand method of doing this as well, where I could just say start colon stop. In this case, there's an assumed step size of one. So in this case here, it it assumes my step is one. So therefore, if I did something like, um, what color do I want to use? Let's use red. So if I did something like vec five, I think I'm on five now, is equal to one colon five, this is telling MATLAB I want to start at one, go to five, and have steps of positive one. So therefore, this produces back the vector one, two, three, four, and five. So in this problem, we were asked to create this vector using the colon operator. So if we look at it, we already know which number it's going to start at. So we can say vec, and we can start at two. Now we have to figure out our step size here. So the difference between adjacent values inside of our vector, so nine minus two is seven. So that's how we know our, um, our step size. So our step size in this case is seven. And then lastly, our final number, we can just look at that in this vector here, and we can say 37. And that's it. However, we could also create this vector many other ways, or variations of this line of code. So remember, our last number is not inclusive in our vector. So therefore, I could do this same line of code, but change my stop to also be 38. Because it'll get to 37, it'll try to add seven, or it'll, yeah, it'll try to add seven, realize that it's over 38, and so it won't add any new number. So therefore, I can have this same variation of code for all, for all of those stopping numbers. Using those stopping numbers would still produce the same vector. The only time that this vector would change is let's say if I did 44, right? Because now when I add seven, I can actually get to that number and it'll be added.